How you doing guys and welcome to a new video where I'll be playing Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin which is a remastered version of the original Dark Souls 2. And in these videos I'll be going through the bosses and offering my tips and strategies on how to beat them. Uh, the first boss in the game which is the Last Giant is quite possibly the easiest boss that I've come across in any Dark Souls, Demon Souls or even Bloodborne game. It's ridiculously easy. But nevertheless, I'm going to try and offer strategies anyway. Now this guy, you can clearly see for yourself, has a vagina where his face should be. So, yeah, that should be a bit off-putting. Uh, the next thing you'll notice it is, is that, um, just like his name suggests, he is a giant. You know, that's why he's called, you know, the last giant. It's not exactly fucking rocket science. But anyway, as you would imagine, with a giant... This guy is slow, however, he does have powerful attacks. So the best strategy that you could have is to stay behind him. If, you, if you're behind him, he can't swipe at you with his arms. Um, so essentially, as long as you stay behind him, the only real move he can do against you is this stamping attack right here. But it's got such a big build up that you can dodge it easily. As you can see, after you've dealt so much damage, or even if you've, you know, stay behind him for too long, he will hop back. However, this is just a, that's just an evasive mover. There's no attack involved in that. So you don't have to worry about that. The only thing really you have to worry about is, like I said, the stamping of his feet he does. But that's ridiculously easy to dodge. And... This only happened to me once, but eventually he will just fall over and attempt to squash you. But again, it's got such a big build-up that it's so easy to dodge. And while he's on the ground, he will, um, you can get some damn good hits in. After you've got him down to roughly half his health, he'll enter his second stage where the fucker rips his own arm off and uses it as a weapon. And now your strategy has to change slightly. Whereas before, when you were behind him, he only stamped once. This time, he will stamp three times in quick succession. And he will alternate between his feet. So, if you're on his left side, he'll stamp his left foot, then his right, then his left again. If you're on his right side, he'll stamp his right, his left, and then his right again. So, it pretty much the same strategy applies. It just means that, you know... After he's finished stamping his foot, you can't just run in and get a few hits in. You've got to stay back for a, a few more seconds. But again, the same strategy. And as you can see, Pussyface has been destroyed. That's the first boss over with of the game. Like I said, it's ridiculously easy. It's not tricky. Just remember the golden rule. Stay behind him and you've pretty much limited anything that he can throw at you. Okay, so now we're on to the second boss of the same level. There are two bosses in this first level. Like I said, the first one was a complete pushover. But this guy, even though he isn't necessarily hard once you figure out what to do, it's basically figuring out what to do that's a trouble. Um, so anyway, whereas the first boss had a, clearly had a vagina for his, his face, this guy clearly thinks that he's fucking Robocop. I don't know, maybe that's a theme of the game. Maybe all these bosses think there's something else. I don't know. But, anyway, this guy has got a huge fucking shield. He's got a huge fucking sword. He's decked out in tough armor. And it really shows because... I'm going to hit him a few times and you'll see just how it does next to no damage. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. It does next to nothing. So... I'm just going to speed the video up here just to show you just how long this fight went on and how I was hitting him and trying to grind him down. And it was just ridiculous. Nothing was happening. Uh, luckily, this guy doesn't have too many moves. He pretty much tends to just do the exact same moves over and over again. And, and to be completely honest, they are pretty easy to dodge because he, he's got such long wind-ups to these moves that you, you can spot them coming a mile away. So it's not hard to get out of their way and... Basically, what you could do if you were trying to beat him with this method is after he doesn't attack, roll behind him, get a few hits in, and then get away before he can do anything. But like I said, he's got such tough armor 
that even though I'm without a doubt positive that this method could kill him, it's just so long-winded, and while you're trying to wear him down, chances are he's going to be wearing you down at the exact same time. So, even though this strategy more than likely would work to beat him, it, it's not really that advisable. There's only so much you can take. There's only so long it can go on before he just clips you, and this guy hits hard, so just one of his clips will will do some serious damage or completely take you out. Another thing that makes this fight even harder is that every single time you die in Dark Souls 2, your health bar gets less and less and less. Um, and it, it drops down to 50% of what it originally was. Uh, you can see it up in the bar. It won't go up any higher than what it is now because I've died so many times. You can raise it up to the top again by um, consuming certain items and they, they will refill your health but essentially the more you die the less health you get unless you use one of these items so anyway one thing that really pissed me off about this boss is that for some reason I, you, it's coming up now he tried to hit me and I clearly dodged I clearly got out of a fucking way but clearly his sword must have some kind of fucking magnetic abilities on them, and they physically drew me towards his blade. Okay, so watch what happens now. Watch what happens when he gears up for his stabbing attack. I clearly dodge, and you can see it. Didn't see it? Okay, I'm going to play it again in slow motion. You can clearly see that I'm nowhere near his sword, but I magically transport back to it. And that really, really fucking pissed me off. Like I said, it's, it's not hard to dodge this guy's moves. It's, it's actually pretty easy. But it becomes less easy when the game just, for no reason, decides to start fucking cheating. Just because, you know, it feels like it. And magically makes it so that it, his hitbox just lands wherever the fuck it feels like. Oh yeah, because that's fair, isn't it? Anyway, I tried this method quite a few times of slowly wearing him down, and it, I just couldn't do it. And like I said, every time I was dying, my health was getting smaller and smaller. It doesn't drop below 50%, so you don't have to worry about that. But 50% of your maximum health is quite a lot. Um, and then I noticed at the rear, you got those two ballistas. So I decided to flip the epic switch and try and get some of these shots off on him, but he was just too fast for me. So, the epic switch has been flipped, and let's get to it. Okay, so I knew my strategy. I knew that I had to use those ballistas. They were obviously there for a reason. But this guy was fast, and he would not stay still long enough for me to, to try and do it. So, I tried to do something that I haven't, I don't do a lot in these type of games. I tried to deflect his attack, which you do by pressing the uh, L2 button on the PS2 controller. It's not something I usually do, because in previous Souls games I've played, it's hard to do. Um, so... I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I tried it there, completely failed. I, I tried it again and it worked and it stunned him for a few seconds. So I thought, right, this is the strategy. So I positioned myself in, in front of a ballista, stunned him, quickly ran behind and got a few shots on on this thing. And look how much damage it did. That's amazing. And uh, I decided to keep uh, deflecting him because that, that was clearly the strategy to do. And um, one thing I've noticed, this could just be me, I could just be exaggerating, but I actually find deflecting much easier in this game than what it was in Dark Souls 3, for example. I don't know whether it's just me, but I don't think it is. I think it is much easier. I mean, I deflected him two times in a row there, and that's, yeah, that's definitely the best advice. Deflect him. Uh, try and get him into a position in front of the ballistas when you deflect him and then quickly run behind and get a few shots in. 
if you can't position him in that just in front of a ballistas, it doesn't really matter. But I think the golden trick is just keep deflecting him. Uh, and like I said, it's much easier to do in this game than it than it has been in other Souls games, in my opinion. And that's the trick. Keep deflecting, and he'll go down eventually. I'm not going to say no time, because he's got mad armor, but eventually. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there, guys. I hope these tips and strategies helped you out, and I'll see you next time.